We'll do it live! The insane VTuber who streamed Japanese corn in a Nintendo game, the Splatoon Not Safe for Work incident. Twitch is a website that likes to think of itself as a video game streaming platform. But when I think of Twitch, I think of OnlyFans meeting Fortnite, baby. <laughs> you might have caught a whiff of the new meta right now on Twitch. Don't sniff that, bro. This is a uh, this is super mega false allegation, kitty. You don't want to get involved in that, buddy. The thing is, with Twitch, Twitch actually did used to be a gaming site. Like that's all it was for. Back in the day, you couldn't even stream on Twitch if you weren't gaming. And the way that people would get around it is they would have to game at the same time as like doing a new kind of content. So like Ice Poseidon, he was doing IRL streams, but technically the rule was you couldn't do IRL streams. So he had to play Pokemon Go while he did IRL streams, which made it gaming. And then as a result, they ended up creating, I think, the IRL, or I think it was the just chatting category they created for him at the time. But back in the day, Twitch was just a gaming platform. If you weren't gaming, you, I think you would just get banned. They wouldn't let you on the website at all. And since then, obviously, they've had to open it up a lot more. I think it's fine if Twitch wants to be a gaming platform or be a streaming platform and allow a variety of content. I think probably the Gooner stuff should probably be on its own website or its own, like, specific little fenced off thing you know what I mean? like this should be like twitch not safe for work or something it should be its own website like youtube generally doesn't have as much gooner content as twitch for a reason youtube doesn't want to be hub but twitch is okay with it i don't know if it's because the employees are personally jerking it to it like dan clancy or what the case is but yeah man it's kind of nuts people used to react by putting league in a small crop box on the side of the screen because they get banned if no gaming was shown. Yeah, they did do that. Like the Twitch meta has always just been trying to get around whatever will get you banned for like whatever the most asinine reason they'll ban you is you have to get around it. And even if you do get banned, usually it's a temp ban. So you come back a few days later, bigger than ever. Like for Mizkif early on, one of the things that got him big was he would like stream, do something silly, get banned. And then he would come back stronger than ever because there was a bunch of controversy around it. It was like, oh, you got to check out this guy's stuff, right? Which involves certain streamers adding a chroma key to their clothing so they can play games on there. This happens every few months on Twitch. Just a few months ago, people were putting black bars on their nude body, with this being the best one, of course. And hey, YouTube, he's wearing underwear, okay? He's not actually naked. Please don't demonetize or ban me. Thank you. I found this current meta to be very interesting, though. I saw that Moist Critical made a video about it. And in that video was- Do you remember that one guy who, during that shit, he was like, he, he, he had the black bars over his dick and his wife came in? <laughs> Where can I find that? He, he was like sitting on stream. He was doing like the, the Tom, like, stop gooning. Or rather the Tom, I'm gooning. Oh, I'm coming! Oh my god, I'm coming! Yeah! He was literally doing that. And then his like wife walked in and was like, what the f*** are you doing? He was like, it's it's, it's a stream meta thing. And he, he and she was like, what, what is wrong? Why am I married to you? He's like, you just don't get it. You don't get it. The Boogie incident. Yeah, Boogie did, uh, Boogie did get naked on Twitch and got banned for it. How could Boogie get banned? You can't see anything. As funny as it is, I think he got banned because there's certain parts of yourself you can show nude. You can't show like a part of your waist. And if you do, you get banned, I think is part of the rule. The tweet from a streamer who had something to say to him. She was pissed that he had used an image of another streamer to highlight this current trend and he didn't credit her. Love your videos, but how come all the metas I've created on Twitch, the topless meta, and now the rear cam meta in bikini that others have copied me for, I never get the origination credit or anything. <laughs> I was banned for the topless meta for 10 days and yet you've credited it to someone else. I get banned for my creativities and my ideas are stolen and profited of. <laughs> This poor artist being profited of with creativities that can rival the Sistine Chapel. Why is there an earthquake? Why is she shaking? What the fuck? But what if I told you that even she did- With most of these girls though, they're pretty self-aware that what they're doing is like clearly just gooner bait. Like they don't actually, uh, there's no way she's being serious, right? She knows that she's being ridiculous. She's just trying to get public attention for it. A lot of these e-thoughts, once they realize that they would get a lot of attention and like subs to their OnlyFans from commentary channels covering them, they would just play it up for views. They would play into the stereotype of like the dumb e-thought. Like you remember um, Zoe Berger, she was like the originator of this. She faked an entire drama with Keemstar. Um, let me see if I can find this. It was the baited podcast she admitted to this. Yeah, so on this, basically the drama was like, Keemstar was like, uh, if a guy was doing this kind of content, we would call him a creep or some kind of file. But when Zoe Berger does it, nobody calls her that. So what's, what's going on here? And then Zoe like fired back and it was a whole drama. But the entire time it was a work. Like they didn't explicitly talk about it, but they were both self-aware about the fact that they were just creating a story. This is the clip where she and Keemstar basically admit to, you know, creating, manufacturing this drama way and me bringing up the question of whether or not you are a though was because was at genius. the time 
there was nothing going on, and it's my job to be an entertainer. Amen. And, and I was, that's why I went back on there, and I was like, oh, it's because I was moaning for scarce. It was a shout-out to myself to go look at my other video responding to well, your shout-out. We all get it. I don't, it. I don't really get it. it. You, you called her a pedo for entertainment purposes. And I well, was I didn't willing call her a pedo. I'm a friend with him. It's no big deal. You know, I my, didn't call her a pedo. My best friend called it dead on Dave. He said this is a work, and that's what it sounds like to me. It sounds like you guys Well, it was quite but brilliant, wasn't it? Stop. They're literally admitting to astroturbing the drama because there was nothing to talk about, right? Pretty crazy, bro. Didn't come up with this idea to begin with. In fact, the first iteration of this idea was in 2022. And the people who came up with it? <laughs> what if I told you they were VTubers? Would you really be surprised? Would you? No, I wouldn't. Why is every... I mean, okay, I'm not going to make generalizations. I'm not racist against VTubers. Why is almost every VTuber a fucking gooner who can't stop trying to get their audience to goon to them? Okay, why is that the case? Why is that the case? You really think to yourself, no way, <laughs> no way VTubers came up with this concept. That's insane. They're known to have a great reputation. <laughs> But this is correct, because in 2022, they didn't stream something on a green screen. No, 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 they alternated it. This is true innovation right here. They instead streamed something on the game they were playing, which was Splatoon 3. And that's something, well, uh, how do I even... How do they do it? I'm trying to think. Did they green screen out the colors here because they're so vibrant to be the gooner stuff? Or did they put it in the game literally somehow? How do they do this? Say this, it, it was... It because they came from being anime fans, just caters to gooners, yeah. Why are anime fans such gooners, bro? Why can't they stop? Refer to the fucking hat, VTubers, all right? Cut it out, chat. It was, uh, it was hardcore porn, okay? It was hardcore porn. Yes, literal Japanese. Oh, so it wasn't even drawn or something. It was literally just straight up, straight up corn. It was straight up adult content. That's crazy. All for attention online. I mean, I guess it worked. There's people making videos about it now. Adult films. Well, seven months ago. And it absolutely broke Twitter in Japan, even forcing Nintendo to make a statement indirectly about it. So yeah, let's uh, <laughs> let's talk about it. This incident didn't just involve one VTuber. This involved an entire org, okay? We're talking about the Japanese VTuber org known as Sinsogumi. So the business approved it in the first place. Their managers, their higher-ups were like, let's do this. Now, were they putting it in-game where kids could see it? Because Splatoon is, I mean, I mean, obviously adults play it, but a lot of it is a kid's game, right? Were they, were they putting the in a game where kids could see it or was it just streamed to the audience like what was going on here now while this involved multiple japanese vtubers from this org the one at the center was tomero ikonone you'll see why later but she was one of the masterminds behind this entire idea but what was this ingenious idea that involved japanese adult videos well it, it was, was chroma key okay. a bunch of these vtubers would get together and play splatoon as a team now splatoon is a game where you try to cover the map with your team's colors the team that covered most of the map with their colors wins so to make the game more challenging they decided to chroma key the okay. enemies so it wasn't specifically shown to the kids in game it was on their stream okay gotcha i i that's what i suspected at first but i wasn't sure color pretty much using it that's how i would do it like a green screen same thing with whatever this is which meant that if the enemy team was winning they risked getting banned because the thing playing on the chroma key was a japanese adult video to make things even more ridiculous <laughs> The adult video playing featured one of the top VTubers for Sinsugumi by the name of Deep Web Underground. So it was literally them playing Splatoon, right? They're playing Splatoon. And as the enemy team was winning, the enemy team was dominating. Let me just say that. You saw a Japanese woman cosplaying as Deep Web Underground getting just absolutely railed. It was ridiculous. I swear this is some- If it was a Japanese woman cosplaying as their VTuber character, what? Did they make the- themselves did they produce the adult video for the street how do they do this why would you do this attention i mean you know you hear about something crazy like this you know you're kind of drawn morbid curiosity some part of you wants to check it out for a lot of people who are just gooners they want to check it out because they're like oh based i want to goon to this right that's basically the deal i think only vtubers can come up with like no one else would do this according to the website Tokyo Kinky, <laughs> one of the people. Like, to VTuber is the funniest thing in the world has been sex and anime girls getting railed. That's basically the most funny thing to them in the world, right? And to the fans, they just want to goon to their favorite fucking anime girl, idol or whatever, right? They want to have their parasocial girlfriend on screen who they can listen to be like, <laughs> 
That's basically the whole thing. They invited to play with them wasn't even a VTuber. Her name was Hinachun. Are there any VTubers who aren't Gooners? I mean, I'm sure they exist, but they're few and far between, you know? It's like it's like asking, like, are there any uh, frat guys who aren't doing Zins? Like, I mean, there's probably one, but the majority of them are popping upper deckies every day. You know, the representative of the... They're representatives of the culture, you know? There are exceptions to any rule, but they're called exceptions for a reason. And she was an adult actress, so of course, after the cosplay video was done, they played a video of her getting railed instead. <laughs> I can't talk about this with a straight face, dude. This is the craziest thing I've ever seen in streaming, period. Now, as this was going on and the streams were gaining a lot of traction because people were finding out about what was going on, the hashtag AV, uh, 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 <laughs> which means adult video splatoon, got trending on Twitter. <laughs> dude, like imagine getting on Twitter and seeing one of the top trends in your country being adult video splatoon you just don't think of adult video and splatoon in the same sentence you just don't but here you were seeing all Man, this guy's fucking having a ball he's having a fucking riot out of this he loves it he loves it he's like oh my god or in Splatoon, this is so freaking funny. This is the funniest thing I've ever seen. This is so based. But their kids, no, to be clear, the they didn't put it in the game literally so kids could see it. They had it on their stream on Twitch. It wasn't in the game to show it to kids. That that was my immediate concern, but that's not what they did. All this go down in front of you. Reactions ranged from utter horror to massive laughter, but this definitely blew up way out of proportion. So much so that they were forced to respond. Most of them did apologize right after, but they've either privated their accounts since then or just straight up del- They apologized after, but like, they knew what they were doing the whole time. Like, the apology doesn't... Like, why even apologize if you don't feel bad, you know? They did it in the first place to get attention on it, right? Like, they wanted they wanted people to look at it. They wanted people to make note of it and talk about it, so it would be a big story. Maybe it escaped their target audience a little more than they intended because people were shitting on them for it. But realistically, you know, whatever, whatever the apology is here, it's not real. They wanted to get attention on this content. They wanted people to look at it. Deleted them. But the apology from the org itself is still up. They pretty much apologize for what happened and that they'll have some strict disciplinary action against the VTubers involved. But nothing really happened. <laughs> the VT yeah, didn't this guy just say the org was like encouraging it? Like everybody in the org was okay with it. They wanted it to happen. I mean, this is all just PR, right? They want to get attention for it. That's what they were hoping for. Why don't they show their faces? I mean, there's a lot of reasons to be anonymous online, you know? I used to not show my face online for a number of reasons. Mostly just, you know, I was in high school. I didn't want people to know what I look like at the time, really. You know, there can be consequences when you're being a shitter online and people in real life, you know, I recognize you and be like, oh, are you the guy that did that? There's obvious reasons. YouTubers didn't really get any- Apart from the gooning. Although well, that's definitely a part of it for them. It's true anything they just carried on now of course this wasn't just seen as a joke many people were actually pissed in japan mostly because they were scared of nintendo's retaliation as you can see here what are you going to do if nintendo changes the distribution terms for all games with well, some people even calling what they did criminal but on the other end of all this some people were like man I, these are my new favorite vtubers baby hey when are they going live again so it was very two-sided my favorite part is that one of the only- Did they not get like a lifetime ban on Twitch? I mean, I guess Twitch never actually bans anyone for showing- A girl had sex on stream and got unbanned for it. So ultimately, you know, Twitch is not going to actually punish any gooner behavior. They're never consistent with their rules. Only apologies that are still up is from Kikaze Kimiko, right? And some of the comments are pointing out, if you're so sorry, then at least change your profile picture because at the time, her profile picture was a- You guys want to know a weird piece of lore? On the Tom Dark channel, if you go to the oldest videos, I think like one of the first commentary videos I ever did, Amaranth commented on it for some reason. Yeah, this this was like the first commentary video I did on this channel, the Hot Tub Streamers rant. Wait, is it gone? I swear Amaranth commented on this video. I know she did. It was here at one point. She commented like an emoji. Like, I think it was like the okay emoji. The white power emoji something they say yeah someone said why do you hard the e-girls comment i did at the time where is it fuck i can't even find it maybe she oh wait didn't her channel get deleted that's probably why it's not there anymore she got banned it was there at one point though i was like why is she watching this video with 20k views nobody was watching this video it had like 4k views when i posted it and she commented on it i was really surprised the middle finger <laughs> And I think the cherry on top in all of this, okay, as everyone was apologizing, is this. Remember her? <laughs> I did say, keep your eye out on her. Well, she made an apology video on YouTube, but some people were... Com totally sincere apology, by the way, for sure. Did it completely intentionally, want to get attention for it. The apology was definitely real, bro. Complaining that this wasn't sincere enough, that she genuinely did not regret her actions. And I really wonder why. I mean, look, her YouTube channel got banned, which means the video has been taken down, unfortunately. But here's a screen cap. 
unfortunately. If you tell me, does she seem serious? <laughs> Why does he think it's so funny? Is it that funny? <laughs> like, it's kind of funny, but bro is rolling over laughing. He can't stop himself. He's ruffle him out. He thinks it's so funny. This dinosaur is getting him fucking going, dude. <laughs> w Reddit. This gets me every time, dude. <laughs> Look at her. Gets him every time. The first time, he's laughing. The second time, he's laughing. The tenth time, he's still laughing, dude. It's the funniest thing in the world. She apologized in a dino costume, dude. I can't stop laughing at this one. <laughs> She wore a dinosaur outfit to apologize. <laughs> oh my god, man. Like, who comes up with this? This is the most unhinged org. Yes, even more unhinged than Face Connect at this point. They wouldn't do this. They wouldn't stream adult films. So as people were busy saying that this wasn't sincere enough, everyone's biggest fear, especially in Japan, was that Nintendo catches wind of this. Because as you know, Nintendo is seen as this ridiculously unreasonable corporation who takes down pretty much anything that has any relation to its IPs and will- Would Nintendo even have legal standing to take this down though? Like is it against the law to stream a Nintendo game when it's fair use, even if it has- I mean, I guess Nintendo does take down videos all the time for retarded reasons, but League in Japan they could. In J I don't know what the law is in Japan. In the United States, though, I don't think they would. Like, if it actually went to court, I don't think they'd have any legal standing to get that content removed. Do you not know the Nintendo legal lore? I mean, I do, obviously. Like, to an extent, I know they're pretty insanely litigious, but gameplay is actually DMCA. Is it? Is, ga is gaming Are gaming videos not technically fair use? Take stances that are extremely anti-consumer while somehow getting away with it. Because, hey, they make such cute games, right? Well, what people were really scared of is that they changed their distribution laws and effectively stop anyone from streaming their games unless they get explicit permission. Which I think says a lot about people's expectations when it comes to Nintendo's legal team. In any case, this spread so quickly on Japanese Twitter and therefore the internet that they had to say something. They didn't make just one post, they made two in which they pretty much reminded everyone of their guidelines regarding use of their copyrighted materials on Notice from public relations, please see the guidelines below regarding the use of our copyrighted materials on network services such as YouTube. Use that violates public order and morals, intentionally misleads the rules of the game, significantly damages the value of the game or characters of the world, or encourages takes advantage of such activities will be subject to deletion or post legal action. We may take appropriate measures. Also, they did notice it a little bit. They saw what was going on. Network services such as YouTube. MC in chat says, I mean, technically gameplay is not fair use, but there's never really been content tested even by Nintendo. Nintendo goes after emulators or not. I mean, I guess technically maybe it's not fair use because they're using the entire content within it. But I mean, they're adding enough commentary like Let's Plays do that I, I feel like the appeal is clearly not the game itself because people wanted to play the game. They would just play the game. People want to watch like fucking Markiplier five, play Five Nights at Freddy's. They're going to watch that, right? But I guess obviously if it isn't fair use, I would assume that the gaming companies just take it on the chin because they're like, well, it's worth the free promotion we generally get from the Let's Players. And the second one being use that violates public order and morals, intentionally misleads the rules of the game, significantly damages the value of the game or characters or the world, or encourages or takes advantage of such activities will be subject to deletion of posts or legal action. Please note, we may take appropriate measures. Literally 1984. <laughs> so of course this was translated using Google Translate, but you get the point, right? And the number one rule with Nintendo, whether you're in Japan, the United States, Europe, Africa, Antarctica, whatever, you never want them to mess with you legally. Their legal team must get paid by every case they create because man, they are on it. <laughs> they are on top of everything. They will take down fan art if they want to. So of course, it comes as no surprise a few days later, several VTubers who participated in the Splatoon AV match have had their accounts banned by YouTube. Ikinone Tomeru and Kikaze Himono's accounts were deleted recently for multiple or severe violations of YouTube's policy on nudity or sexual content. While Sigiri's channel had been deleted during the initial Not Safe for Work stream, Kotaku reached out to YouTube to clarify over whether or not Nintendo had been involved in their account removal. This is always the thing, like, I see a lot of VTubers complain about being banned on Twitch or being banned on YouTube, and, like, on one, like on Twitch, they had, do have really inconsistent enforcement policies, yeah, for sure, but on YouTube, like, they're pretty strict about sexual content, you know? It, like, it shouldn't really be surprising to you if you have cartoon on your stream that YouTube is going to ban you. Like, you're basically just poking the bear there, you know? I'm generally against banning in general, but I, I don't want YouTube to just become, like, a degenerate goon cave. Because, I mean, that would potentially drive a lot of advertisers away because they're going to be like, 
why is my Coca-Cola ad on this like lolly VTuber bending over to show her fucking, you know, whatever, right? Like obviously advertisers aren't gonna like that. So like, you know, there are instances where I'll extend some sympathy to VTubers who get banned if it's like really not egregious at all, but a lot of the time they're basically asking for it, you know? But did not get a response by the time of publication. I've heard any VTubers complain about getting banned on YouTube. I saw one just a few months ago. We covered it on stream. But hey, I think it's safe to say Nintendo did in some way, shape or form, have a little hand in this. I don't know what they were thinking. Maybe they were thinking they'd get a slap on the wrist or something, but this isn't Twitch, okay? This is YouTube. Once your account is suspended, it's over. You're done. On Twitch, you can flash your boob, you can flash your vagina, you can flash your ass, whatever. Hell, if you're a Pokemon, you can show Pokepub and you won't get banned. Well, in fairness for Pokemon, that was a mistake. She didn't intend to do that, so I wouldn't say she should be banned for a mistake, right? <laughs> I think with that, someone sent her a link in chat and she opened it. It was like, oh, what the fuck, and clicked off it, right? Hold a 24-hour vacation and come back the next day. But when YouTube sus- Remember when Tyga complained about getting banned when they literally did not say for work shit on stream and YouTube all the time? Is that the person I'm thinking of? I don't remember specifically what they were doing because I think you, like, because of what was being talked about and, like, because it was banned worthy, you couldn't even show it on YouTube. But, yeah, a lot of a lot of the VTubers will, like, be like, oh, I got banned. And it's like, well, you did show, like, anime porn on your stream. Like, what, like, what do you what do you expect, really, you know? Hope she sees this, Tom. I do, too. Pokemon is my fucking queen. Spends you. When YouTube terminates you, you're never seeing your account again. How did this incident wrap up in the end though? Well, this is the Sinsugumi website today. They seem to still be doing well, you know, it's fine. They've moved on from this. Because as a very wise cocaine sniffing man once said, there's no such thing as bad publicity. I'm sure they've gained quite a few loyal fans due to this incident. As for our favorite dinosaur, <laughs> Tomero Ikinone, she is also still active, even though she got banned from YouTube and doesn't seem to be a part of the org anymore, she is still active on Twitch, being live very recently. Screw it, because I love the dinosaur apology video so much, I'll link her channel in my description. Go follow her. Now to everyone's surprise, Nintendo did not end up taking legal action. Refer to the hat, I will not be promoting however the fuck you say that. I will not be promoting whoever she is whatsoever. Action against the org or the- there's no such thing as bad publicity because of freaks. I mean, there is, there are examples of bad publicity if you get banned. Like, that's obviously not where you want to go. The kind of key for a lot of these streamers who want to get attention from doing degenerate shit is like kind of riding that line, no pun intended, kind of riding that line right between when you're going to be just controversial enough on Twitch, you make it a temporary ban, but not controversial enough, you'll get a perma ban, right? That, that's the line for them. On Twitch, though, where that line is, is very hard to define because they never actually enforce their TOS. I like the comically small mustache. There's nothing comical about it. I'm very serious about this small mustache, okay? Adolf Reviews is in the building, bitch. Learn it! Learn it! The VTubers involved. Other than losing their channels, one could say that they got away with it in some way. In the end, one thing's for sure. The bathtub lounging, black bar covering, chroma key abusing women of Twitch are not as creative as they think they are. Because if they thought about it, the VTubers probably did it first. Since I'm doing this full time now, I'm streaming as well, both on- Why do, uh, this guy isn't really doing it, but why is there like this, uh, among a lot of VTuber fans, they're like, I love the cartoon gooners, but I fucking hate, I fucking hate the real flesh women. They're like, flesh women are degenerate, but cartoon is base, cartoon lolly was base. Like, that's a lot of, I've seen a lot of VTubers say that on Twitter. Why is that? What's up with that? What's going on there? Why, why is there that kind of, like, dichotomy? Because they're broken freaks. I mean, that's probably a pretty simple explanation. I guess I'm hoping there's something deeper, but you know, Occam's razor would suggest it probably is the most simple explanation. They just don't like real girls. I don't like either of them.